calling to order um, the special meeting of the Bloomfield Hills School Board of Education. It is uh, February 15th at 6.30 p.m. Um, Secretary Noble, can you take attendance, please? Um, all trustees are here except for uh, Dr. Southworth and Colin. <laughs> all right, can we please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? Public comment. Public comment is an opportunity for the public to address the Board of Education. It is not a time for dialogue. In the interest of time, the Open Meetings Act provides that the board may place limits on the time allotment for an individual comment. In addition to making a public comment, you may also email the board at any time. Any comment that contains profanity, threats, defamatory remarks, or is directed at any person not employed by the district or member of the Board of Education in their official capacity and related to the role and responsibilities for which they are employed or serve or is otherwise exempt from First Amendment protection will be excluded from public comment. If you are speaking on behalf of a group or organization, please identify who you represent. Thank you for taking the time to address the BHS Board of Education. Uh, reminder that public comment is limited to three minutes. Um, um, Trustee Fala will keep track of the time. And we're ready. First up is uh, Kina Walk. Um, hello, board. My name is Kina Walk. I'm with our high school's robotics team. Um, I've been doing the first robotics program for seven years now. I started in fifth grade. Um, I did middle school um, robotics with an all-girls team of six girls. It was an incredible experience, um, and I learned a lot from it. Uh, they helped me realize of my love for STEM, my love for leadership, and my love for advocacy. Um, so currently, I am the drive coach, the strategy lead, and the advocacy lead on our high school robotics team. Um, as drive coach, it is my job to make sure that our team is communicating properly with the other teams from across the world, as first is an, or is an international organization, and we go to worlds every year because we are a Hall of Fame team. Um, as strategy lead, I lead our team through all of our statistical data collection throughout our competitions, and as advocacy lead, I do things like this. Um, through the, these couple of years, I have been able to earn an internship with the Student Association for STEM Advocacy. We host a national advocacy conference in D.C. every year to advocate for increased funding for after-school STEM extracurricular activities. Um, I've also helped our team to lead a group to go to our Michigan Advocacy Conference every year, um, where we go talk to our state representatives and senators about the same concept. Um, I This past week, I went to the United Nations um, to attend the International Day for Women and Girls in Science. I also did this when I was in seventh grade, and I spoke with the rest of my all-girls team. It was an amazing experience, and I learned a lot from it. Um, and I've recently been nominated for the Dean's List, um, which is a very prestigious list. There's 20 people in the entire world that win it every year. Um, th from our program. So uh, overall, I just wanted to come and tell you all of the incredible impacts that uh, the robotics team has had on my life um, and my journey as a student at Bloomfield Hills High School. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Amal Mehta. Hi, board. My name is Anmol Mehta. I am a junior on the high school robotics team, and I've been doing robotics for about eight, nine years now. I started in about third grade, and it has had a profound impact on my life. When I started in elementary middle school, I was actually mentored by the high school team, and now I'm here doing it for all the younger kids as well, who we bring up and bring into the future of engineering by getting them excited about it through several programs. Every year, starting January, we are only allowed six weeks to build a robot, but considering events such as snow days and other events for holidays, that shaves down to about three and a half to four weeks. Yet every year, we are required and are ready with a competition-ready robot. We always go to states in our world's classes, and we outperform everywhere. We are known across the world for our winning uh, in 2018 of one of the most prestigious awards in robotics ever. 
as Kina said. It won us the Hall of Fame and has won us respect by many teams. We've been to and been from many other teams' uh, loading areas, sessions, and such. We have met with teams from other countries, such as Canada, uh, Israel, China, Japan, everywhere. We make connections with everybody, and everybody loves to come and talk to us about all the things we've done. As a whole, we are extremely well known in our community. Everything we do and everywhere we go, we cause and support a great change, and we are essentially the future. And I just wanted to come and tell you guys this because I feel it is more known and needs to be more known by everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Matthew Welch. Actually, can we let Sonata go before me? And then I'll sure. Hmm? Next up, um, Sanan Alani. Uh, good evening. I'm here on behalf of uh, Bloomfield Hills Bionic Blackhawks, and I've been in robotics for four years. And um, I'd like to talk to you about the volunteer opportunities I've had like, while being on the team. Uh, one of the biggest volunteer opportunities I've been on was Operation Good Cheer. It's where we sell a variation of a root beer float, which we call Bot Brew, at school and robotics events, like football games and at our own Bloomfield Girls Robotics Competition. And then we use the money we raise to buy Christmas gifts for foster children. Not only has this opportunity allowed me to really reach out into the volunteer front, but has also helped me get over my social anxiety that I built up over COVID. And selling these drinks and talking to multiple team members and customers like helped me gain a real like social intelligence. Another thing that we do is mentoring, where we mentor teams within our own district, but also one in Detroit as well, that being Durfee. I've been lucky enough to mentor teams not only at Eastover, but at Detroit middle schools as well, like Durfee. And we support them in a lot of other ways other than robotics. For example, one thing that stuck with me was when I watched one of my own mentors help a kid on one of the Detroit middle school teams like draft their essay to get into Marygrove. Along with these impactful volunteering opportunities, I've also had chances to build my portfolio shaping towards what I want to do with my career. Like I've gained multiple internships, paid and unpaid, partially due to my robotics experience as it has been brought up during almost all of my interviews. Overall, both supporting and having the robotics team in the area helps push kids like me into the STEM field with many accessible opportunities, as well as enabling us to give back to the community. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Uh, next up, Matthew Welch. Thank you, good evening. Uh, my name is Matthew Welch. Um, I'm a parent of a couple of the kids on the robotics team. Um, and you've heard these guys talk about uh, what an incredible effect the robotics team has had on their lives. And I wanted to talk for a minute about the uh, impression that our robotics team makes in the community. Um, as they mentioned, our team is a Hall of Fame team, which means that we travel annually to the uh, World Championship event down in Houston. Uh, and we typically also qualify for the state level competition, and we travel around the state for other qualifying competitions. Uh, this robotics team uh, succeeds. It wins. It represents this school fantastically uh, around the area, around the state, and in, in fact, around the world. We talk to people every year, uh, international teams that come to the United States, and we get a chance to shine a light on, on the great things that this, this school and this program uh, can do. Um, but. Uh, part of that is uh, because of the uh, facilities that we have, what this school provides to us. Um, we've learned that the uh, board intends to move the robotics into basically an elementary school gym. And it's really not enough to keep this program at the level it's at. Uh, robotics represents this district. It brings people in. It draws attention, positive, positive attention to this district. Uh, and we're concerned that we're being downgraded into a smaller facility. It's just not going to make it possible to maintain the sort of uh, impression that we make. Um, we look at a lot of other uh, teams that represent this district uh, that don't have anything like the, uh, the breadth and the reach and the scope and of the effect that the robotics team has. And they have, you know, plenty of facilities. There's an enormous, the football team has an enormous facility. It's designed into the very layout of the high school grounds. Uh, you know, they're not representing us internationally. Let's, you know, we're here to ask you to, 
We're going to come back to another meeting. We've got a whole slate of people that are going to come. You've got more coming to talk to you about this, uh, about the facility needs of this robotics team. We're asking that, uh, that you support this team uh, at a level it really deserves because it represents this community in fantastic, excuse me, in fantastic ways. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Garen Nick Gozen. Wow, that's pretty good. Oh, Nobody gets that. It's like a, <laughs> with every letter in the alphabet minus. I'll take them when I can get them. So thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> As you mentioned, I'm Garen, and I forget my last name, Nick Agosian. Uh, thank you for listening to us. You've heard quite a bit of story from every team member that's had an opportunity to talk to you guys now. Um, as well as the parents, and you'll hear more of this coming up to you uh, in the uh, coming weeks and uh, coming board meetings. We had a pleasure to walk around what's the proposed site of the future of what where our home could be. Uh, but I want to take a moment and talk about the collaborative effort of working with you guys in giving the robotics program, not just the high school one, but the entirety of it, a good home. Um, I got two kids in a robotics program. My daughter is a senior. She's going to graduate uh, this year and go to CCS. She's aided by some robotics uh, funded or uh, enabled scholarships as well as a few others. You've actually heard her speak at this, uh, at this board meeting as well. And my son's uh, going to be in seventh grade next year and he's already bitten by the bug. So he's going to go through the program as well. Uh, it's important to note that robotics elevates the school district um, highlights what has been done in the past, which is all the accolades that the team's collected over the years. Uh, it's put us on the map. We're in, on the world stage at Worlds because everybody literally shows up. So you could have the best and f most free advertisement for the district as you could possibly ever want with that many eyes on it. But it also sets us up for the future because it's the home for technologies that are going to be emerging and you want your students to be able to be exposed to these uh, technologies and you want the uh, tech companies to come over and sponsor us, donate product as they do, support the district as they do and have a shining star of a place where they can actually talk about the future of what the industry is going to go. So really appreciative of the fact that you guys are open to listening to these things and working with us because I think as partners we would like to work together to give robotics a home that's deserving of the potential that it can bring not just to the students, but to the district itself. So plan on hearing from us more and a lot of collaborative and constructive dialogue and looking forward to what we can accomplish to really make this thing a shining part of, uh, another shining part of what this district is and why we're attracted to have families here and go to school here. Thank you for your time. I think we got one more and then uh, we'll see you guys in the future meetings. Thank you. Uh, Chad Campbell. Uh, good evening. Uh, Chad Campbell, I guess you asked me to identify where I'm, just to be honest, where I'm coming from. So I'm a parent in the district, but also I think because of my level of involvement, I'll, I'm also, I've been volunteering with and also a local organization here with uh, Franklin Baseball and Softball. Um, so that's, that's where I'm uh, coming to inquire today to ask for some additional clarification of what I see as some confusion or whatnot, just uh, for myself, but then also as I've been continuing to volunteer. Um, I am curious and I have submitted a request uh, through the Zendesk, uh, through the uh, community, haven't received a feedback yet, but I am, we do have listed within our community uh, district partner organizations on the page. I don't expect you guys to under, to memorize your, the, the website that we have out there, but looking at it as a uh, resident and also as a, a family member, but now as volunteering, helping this other nonprofit organization in the community. Uh, I'm just confused by what's listed there with the information. We have Bloomfield Baseball Program that's listed as a community partner. Um, I'm a parent of two girls in the program, uh, two girls that play softball. Bloomfield, I get it. If they're a partner, great. They don't offer softball, so that's where my questions were kind of wondering. I also see that we also have listed Birmingham, a neighboring community, uh, Birmingham girls softball that's listed on our website as a, as a partner as well. Great. I'm volunteering now, have girls. Franklin baseball and softball program is literally within the confines of this community. It's been in the community for over 70 years. Um, I've been inquiring. I'd like to also volunteer if there are other opportunities perhaps to partner with other nonprofit organizations, mostly with athletics, um, just looking for assistance or most importantly some feedback or response to understanding what is the criteria that we as a district take to list these organizations as um, official um, district partners on the website. Now, I, you have my contact information. I can also follow up. 
Um, but I believe I also have a, a ticket number if that assists uh, as well that I've submitted for the same information. But also, thank you very much for everything you guys do up here. I know there's a lot more pressing priority items, but any assistance would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jenna Geyer, I, I'm, I can't read the, <laughs> the letters. It looks like G-A-Y-E-T, I'm sorry. It's a, How do you say your last name? Uh, Geyer. Geyer, oh, okay, so I wasn't too far off, all right. Um, I'm a freshman and I just recently joined the robotics team, but through my short time here, I've been given like, I've been given so many like amazing opportunities and I've met such like an amazing group of people and I've learned so much and I'm really grateful to be in like such an amazing community. Um, not only is it just like a great like group, but the team who cares about helping everyone around them and helping like their, um, helping their like district and everything. Um, we raised $1,200 for charity after we raised the money. We worked for long hours loading and wrapping gifts to send to foster kids. And like during my past like school experiences, I've never like seen or been able to be in a group that's built on like such like importance of being organized and responsible. And I feel like I've just never like seen that in a school setting before. And I feel like this is like, it's, it's such a, it's such an amazing like place to be and it's such like it's such an important like part of like my life to like move on forward. The fact that like this also only happens with like volunteers and like PTO staff, um, and like kids working after school and during weekends, it's astonishing. Ultimately, robotics is like a great learning experience for students, but sadly it's it doesn't seem as it's like treated as such. The Hall of Fame Robotics team is a team that has won the championship like first impact award. Out of thousands of teams over 100 countries, we're one of the only 35 in the world that have been chosen. We had the robot and we had the skills for the robot, but ultimately I think the reason that we were chosen was because of the work that we did like regarding like charity in our community. Um, I've seen firsthand how kind and generous and welcoming this team is, and I really hope to see it thrive in my future years, but I feel like if we do get moved to this place, it's going to be a lot more restricted. It's going to be so much harder to see that hope like thrive and see this theme like really elevated as much as it can be. Um, as like a hard, as a hardworking like Hall of Fame team, I feel like we I feel like we should have more say in kind of the decisions that are regarding our future. Um, we see other teams like athletics and performing arts get a lot of support and aid, and I feel like we deserve it too. Not only do I see like a, a slight like lack of support, but we also seem to be um, slightly like pushed around to different like places, which makes it a lot harder for our team to coordinate everything and kind of navigate. When clear communication of needs that must be met are disregarded, it feels uh, it feels like a lack of respect. The place we are being pushed to is definitely not large enough for us. The team has um, the team has been changed to four locations within the past ten years, which just makes it like very hard for like us to generally like organize our space and every time you kind of had to like adapt to a new building that doesn't really fully meet our needs. And I've greatly enjoyed my time on this team. It's amazing. I've learned so much. I've really, my passion has been like continued. I loved like working in coding. I love learning about build. And I like, I hope to see it like go on in the future and I hope to see it accomplish more than it already has. The decisions that like affect us personally and that we should be a large part of our kind of being made without us. And it hinders our abilities to do as good as we know what we can do. It doesn't feel like we get recognized as much as we need to. So hopefully we will continue to, hopefully we'll continue to like be, be able to like fully show like our potential at like competitions with like enough like enough like support and enough like resources that we have and the responsibility we have and I think should be used to really like showcase of how we can like 
um, organize ourselves and like really take care of like everything we have. I think it's just like amazing how like robotics has been going on for like so long. It's like it's a very like beautiful process and hopefully it's just like the beginning of smoother years to come and hopefully I can like see it be able to grow and the people in it be able to learn more and more. Thank you. All right. Well, that seeing no more uh, public comment, that concludes um, section two. Moving on to section three, our superintendent search um, discussion. So with us tonight is Mr. Tim Stein of the Michigan Leadership Institute. Um, and Tim, I'll let you kick it off and introduce yourself and go highlight what it is that we need to cover this evening. Okay. Um, purpose, this was the purpose of this special meeting is to discuss this very topic and I'll let you take it over. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, it's a pleasure to be here with you. Um, um, I, I know from talking, <laughs> uh, having the opportunity to talk with Megan and Shiva and, and uh, Michelle that it's been a little bit of a long process, but I'm hopeful that we can close it for you, get you through to the end uh, here quickly. Uh, and I'm optimistic that you're going to um, have some good candidates. You have a lot to be proud of in this district. Um, so I think that uh, I believe that my colleagues or former colleagues will see that and take advantage of the opportunity. So uh, what I really need from you tonight is to go through the timeline, make sure we can lock that in. Um, so I'll take you through that. Uh, everybody on the board has been through this process in the fall, correct? So and last summer. And last last summer, I'm sorry. And uh, um, so I don't really have to probably rehash a lot of that with you unless you have specific questions. Um, we, with Rebecca's help, we've structured this timeline uh, very similar to what <laughs> to what you experienced or wanted in the last search. So. Um, I'm hopeful that that will um, accomplish a lot of your needs. Um, but uh, for those of you that don't know me, I haven't had the opportunity. I'm, a, um, I'm the regional president from Central Michigan. And so my region is um, from Port Huron to Flint to Lansing, north to Mount Pleasant, and Mount Pleasant across the Saginaw and everything in between. Um, but we do at times uh, in situations like this you know, uh, venture out to help other districts. So um, it's a pleasure to be here with you and, and again, to, to work with you through this process. So um, if we look at the, the draft timeline, um, you know, uh, you see, you'll see starting tonight with our uh, meeting, if we can finalize this timeline, you give me the thumbs up and the thumbs up on the candidate profile, um, then I'm hopeful, um, that there's even potential for the posting to be up before the 19th um, because of the fact that you had a lot of things already in place mm -hmm. from the last search. So, um, but at least, um, at the very least, it will be up uh, by the 19th. So um, the posting would take place from February 19th to March 18th. I think that's plenty of time. Um, I already had uh, just on my way here. I don't know how they've already picked up on the fact that I'm um, you know, uh, facilitating the search, but I've already been contacted by three individuals with interest. So we'll, that's a good sign, typically, when you're driving to your first meeting if people are contacting you. So uh, I'm optimistic or hopeful in that regard. So we post for a month uh, from February 19th to March 18th. Um, you have your spring break, I know. So right after spring break that following week, uh, we would do a special meeting. Um, I'll have everybody categorized for you. I understand that you've uh, scheduled some time with Rebecca the last time too to individually look at um, some things. Uh, that You'll see that reflected in the schedule too. Um, it'll be the same process. You'll have a notebook full of the candidates. Uh, it'll be the only time we go into closed session uh, for me to uh, discuss the candidates with you. There'll be no deliberation on the board's behalf at that time. I will come out of closed session. Uh, all the candidates will be identified by letter. We'll do a tally at that time and you'll make a determination as to who you want to interview, okay? Um, 
the first round candidate interviews, and this again will be depending on the number that you decide you wanna interview, uh, but we have three uh, dates um, available or identified in the calendar. Typically, uh, you know, I suggest we up for a minimum of four up to six, um, and that's why you have the three days, so potentially, um, you know, it could be more or less in regards to whether or not you'll need the three nights. Um, from those initial first round interviews, and you, you know, we'll go through that process, you'll select your questions, I understand, and, and maybe you might even decide to use some of the same questions you used last time, um, which will expedite that process too. Um, um, well, that will all be determined at the, in that first week. Uh, and then at the 23rd board meeting, rather than adding additional board meeting to your already busy schedule, uh, you can select the finalists at, the, at your uh, April 23rd board meeting. Um, from there, uh, May 1st, um, we'll have a special board meeting. Um, uh, will be our first finalist interview. You know, we typically will go down to two, which I'm sure you went last time. Um, once in a while, district will decide, you know, that they might wanna add a third candidate. I suggest two, <laughs> but uh, that's completely your decision. Um, so you have two days scheduled, the first and the second for finalist interviews. Um, again, this is your decision, but typically we come into the district with the candidate and they meet with students and staff and, um, uh, community members so you can get some feedback from them. It's a very transparent process. Hopefully you experienced that the last time. So there'll be plenty of opportunity for community to give you feedback too. Um, and we'll work, um, uh, Rebecca and I talked about that today, uh, about making sure that we have a mechanism for that feedback to get to you um, uh, prior to having to make any decisions. Um, then. You know, again, this is something that you need to be mulling around. Um, tentatively, we've got scheduled May 6th through 8th if you want to do a visit um, to a candidate district. Um, it's, really, it's become about a 50-50 with districts as to whether they do that or they bring candidates in and take them around to the can districts. You, can you clarify what you're, um, I've lost track of? Yeah, this would be your opportunity, a subcommittee, to go and visit a district from a finalist. So you're down, let's say you're down to two finalists. You have one that's from Southfield and one that's from Farmington, let's just say. So you might decide you as a board, subcommittee of the board, want to go out and see them in their environment. Is that a common practice? It used to be very common. Now it's gotten to the point that people have been more likely, and I don't know if this is post-COVID, but uh, uh, to bring them into your district and you kind of structure a day that they meet with people and you kind of go around and see how they interact with people and so on. So it's your choice. Well, we can open that up to discussion at the right time, but I want to clarify that. Yeah, that footnote yeah. so you have that opportunity if you want to. Now, I take it by your, that you didn't do that last, last time. When we had this last <laughs> time, we structured it so that the candidate would be here on yeah. site. And part of the issue with our timing last summer is because it was summer. So we yeah. did not have the opportunity to do that. Right. So I want to emphasize, um, re with Rebecca's assistance, we've been able to iron out some of these dates um, via Rebecca conducting yeah. some polls on availability because that is the biggest challenge with a group of this many pro right. professionals. Um, so that's why we have these dates and it's important that we stay on this timeline for that very reason because that was a really important yeah. point for this board last summer that we couldn't have, see a candidate interact here at our schools. And I think that will, and I would, you're 100% right. I think it's an opportunity for you as a board. It's one of the most critical pieces of this process. So, um, so that, you know, how we structure that, you know, um, you know, I certainly, you let, will let me know and I can work with Rebecca and, and uh, Karen to work through that. Um, from that date, uh, your special board meeting will be to select your next superintendent, hopefully. Um, and that's scheduled for May 9th right now, uh, pending your approval. Um, and then you'll see that lag of time to your regular meeting. Well, the reason for that is that's to negotiate a contract with that individual. Um, and that's plenty of time, um, you know, for you to do that. 
Um, and, I, you know, we also, uh, and I don't know if you had any involvement from John on that, but that, you know, I can help in any way that you need me to facilitate that too. Typically your board attorney does the majority of that negotiation, but anything I can do to help in that process, um, you know, you'd certainly ask. Um, tentative start date I have down as July 1. Um, I think that you've, I mean, you're hitting this at the right time. Um, you know, this is when people are looking and looking from other states too. Matter of fact, one of the individuals that called me was from another state. So, um, you know, so I think you're going to see a different pool of candidates than you saw last time. So, we all should knock on wood. But, um, I, so I'm optimistic in that regard. So, I don't know any questions in regards to the timeline. <clears throat> Maybe it's more for Rebecca than you, I don't know, but in terms of how we did it before with um, the first round interviews, would we, would we, like, are we talking about doing that? Um, didn't we set aside time, or maybe that was for something else, but we set aside a way for people to, like, comment yeah. or give feedback. Would we do it the exact same way as we did before? Well, unless you tell me you want to do it differently. I don't want to do it. I'm just curious. Yeah, that's, no, that's the way it's structured. Okay. Yeah, that's our process. So typically the first round interviews are 90 minute interviews max. And I'll give you a little timer. So you, you, don't, want to, you don't want to go past 90 minutes. Um, and uh, um, during that process, um, you know, they'll have, each of you will have typically, I don't know what you had, last, I think you said two last time, two per uh, category, but typically three questions, 21 questions roughly, yeah. are asked to the candidate. Um, and then they have an opportunity to respond to that too. The audience will have um, uh, an opportunity to provide feedback to you as a board. Um, very similar. I think that's in your packet too, correct, Rebecca? I put it in your packet if you want to pass it around. Yeah. So this is um, what you used the last time. And then you'll get that feedback. Um, you will get it next day. Right. Okay. Yeah. And I think it's a good process to have. Yep. So, some people do it in writing. This was, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll be a QR code and then a link, yeah. and then if people come, we'll have clipboards and things like that too. So. And we'll do any of the meetings that I have with your stakeholder groups. When you get down to your finalist groups, too, they'll have an opportunity to provide feedback also. So you'll have more feedback than you could probably ever want. But uh, it's part of the process, and it's part of being transparent. So we make sure that everybody that wants to participate has an opportunity for their voice to be heard. So when would we be doing, you mentioned having stakeholder groups. That's down to... here with the um, special board meetings and the finalist interview. Okay. on May 1st and 2nd. And those, typically the finalist um, <clears throat> meetings are, uh, typically you'll have them do a presentation. Yeah. And then uh, you have a, a shorter series of questions that you take it through. Typically they're more directed than the generic first round uh, questions, more directed at uh, your interests as a board of what you want to um, have some clarity on from the candidates. So, and w we can work through that with you too uh, once we get to that point. So they would be one candidate on the first and one candidate yep. the second. And the questions from the audience, uh, will they be repeated for both uh, final candidates. Now, did you have questions from the audience last no. time? No, and I, okay. no. Um, typically, because that, unless you want to prolong the process, it's easier to have more structured questions based on the feedback you already have. Because I, from the first interview, you're going to get questions also in your feedback sheet. Said, what else would you like to know, kind of candidates? And you're going to have ideas on what you're really looking for um, in your candidate and what types of things haven't been asked that you really want to know. Um, so um, that's something that some districts choose to do. Uh, it just depends on how long you want those finalist interviews to be. 
Um, I have less and less districts doing that all the time due to the fact that you have me jumping up and down at times saying that's not a question that should be asked, you know, potentially if you have it in a public forum. The portal that we received questions through last time, that was a BHS portal, not an MLI portal, correct? Right. So yeah. I, we put the MLI logo, but we, um, the board members are the only ones that have access to it, so mm -hmm. it's protected. Right. But um, it is posted on our website and whatever, and so people can fill it in. And, and people are able to post questions anonymously as well. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then um, talking about the board members to visit candidates at their work sites, mm -hmm. um, is that typically board members or? It's the subcommittee of the board. Okay. Um, you know, some boards will, um, I mean, you have a superintendent search committee. If you, you know, it would depend on who you designate to go, they would go. Um, the candidate would structure his day for you. You'd tell him what you'd like to see um, whether you want to see the projects he's worked on and the people he's worked on. And he really creates an opportunity for you to see not only the environment he's in, uh, he or she, I should say, um, but also um, um, you know, to talk to the people in his district or her. Um, so, I mean, that's a consideration uh, for you. Um, and then, like I said, it's a toss up now. It just depends on what you feel. You want it, and it may be, and you don't have to let me know until we get a little closer to that piece. I mean, once you start to see the candidates, it, you know, it's complicated by the fact that if you tell me we're doing a nationwide search, that might, you know, that might be a challenge for you if you're going to uh, go to um, North Carolina. Um, but, uh, you know, that'll be a choice you'll make, um, you know, as we get further down the road. But. It just is what, you'll have a sense by then, you know, what you really think you need to hear from these people, so, or what you need to see. Um, so I don't, it, it won't, I don't, it's not typically a tough choice by the time you get to that, but there are two options for you that you need to know about in that regard. Um, John, do you have any questions? I do not. <clears throat> Carolyn, I don't think we heard from you. Nope. Okay. One other point I want to clarify, um, which the subcommittee has discussed with you at length, the subcommittee being myself, Michelle, and Siva, um, is understanding, having gone through this last summer through this traditional format and last fall through a more targeted format, mm -hmm. you know, understanding and having empathy for the very public nature yeah. of this, which... <laughs> You know, it's the nature of the job is public, so yeah. I suppose it's appropriate that it starts off this way and I understand that. However, um, we as a subcommittee are offering ourselves um, confidentially for any candidates prior to submitting an application to be available to just talk to us, just ask us about the position, something we could set up informally over the phone. Um, the person, the candidate could reach out to you and then they could point them to me and I could bring in Michelle and Siva. It was suggested that if we were to go in that format that it not be a subcommittee, that it be just directly with the president. Um, I've discussed that with the subcommittee and I can say that it's my prefer preference not to field that individually. I prefer to, to field it with the subcommittee. I think we have a good working relationship. We remind each other of things to bring up and discuss um, and uh, there's no level of decisioning happening in that conversation. It is simply fielding a phone call from somebody to say, hey, before I put myself through this very public process, I just wanted to talk to a couple board members and just ask them about their district. So we are available for that okay. um, and wanted to be clear about exactly what that would look like. Okay. And Siva and Michelle and I discussed it as well. Perhaps with schedules, it wouldn't work out that the three of us could be present, but at least two of us would be. Um, right. So that, again, we can keep track of our conversations. And, and I would anticipate that you'll have candidates will take advantage of that. Yeah, it, we welcome that. And I, I understand why in the past that hasn't been a standard protocol. Right. Um, but again, I, I have a lot of empathy for people's hesitation to just do this blindly without ever talking to repre official representatives of the district. So. 
I think that was my last clarifying point. I think we've agreed on these dates. Um, what else do we need to go through? So that puts us through sections one and two. I think we need to move on to three. Yeah. Is that accurate? Yeah. So the so if you look at the candidate profile, uh, you just did this um, back in the summer. Um, so what we, we've updated it uh, um, with some new numbers and demographic information. Um, we also increased, it's my understanding that you were increasing your salary range, and you'll see that new number, the 275 to 300,000 um, salary range. Is that a recommendation of the committee? Or did we talk about that before? That was just okay. And we also discussed the fact that <clears throat> for candidates, everybody, everybody's, um, contract and what they've negotiated is very unique to their own position for where they're at currently. So if there were things that, you know, that's a baseline and if there was, um, if there were other things, whether it's money or any compensation, mm -hmm. that it could be discussed later at that time, but that this was like a good baseline to get us to a spot where we would feel comfortable going out and getting the right pool, but okay. yeah. Okay. No, just one point of clarification on that. Is that range here for salary and benefits or salary only? That's salary. salary. Okay. All right. Just to clarify. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Because that was the point we were talking yeah. about. Right. Some districts may say, well, I have this is my salary plus various allowances or whatever else it may be. So this was our base with the understanding that that's all handled through negotiations or anything else. Um, and then really um, beyond that, um, you know, everything's just been updated with dates, you know, which we'll double check and make sure um, that we have everything identified um, in regards to um, the updating of the sheet and then your new board positions are identified there um, or offices. So remind me on the, on we've got the profile, yep. we're going to ask for applications. I don't recall how it happened the first time. Yeah. yeah. We viewed all applications, or was it filtered? No, you'll see all applications. Everything. Yep. I mean, room. unless you tell me you want something. No, no, no. I was just curious. Them. Okay. Yeah. He he put them in in tiers. Which is typically what we do is we'll divide the you know based on um, the candidate profile and it, you know one of the things I'd like to talk to you about it. I don't want to spend take too much more of your time, but it would be helpful for me to hear from you in the candidate profile section, kind of your priorities as a board member. Since I wasn't here at the initial process when that was all sure. created, um, and we can do that in a minute, but uh, um, you know, so I'll categorize them based on that information uh, that I feel fit that. And again, that's my impression as a former superintendent. What I think you're based on what you've told me you're looking for, um, but that doesn't mean you necessarily have to hire the people out of it. It's just a recommendation. Sure. Then no, it usually is a second category of people that just might maybe fit part of it you know maybe they don't fit the you know the education piece but there's something about them that they're worthy of I think of consideration and then you'll have a third group of people that just don't fit what you've been you know shared that you're looking for in the candidate profile now you can you know you know, you'll decide who you want to vote for and who you want to look at in an interview. So it's just a way to kind of help you expedite the process, really. So, and there, you know, I've had people tell me they don't, you know, they don't necessarily agree with this or they don't, but it, it you know, and that's okay. That's all right. You know, and this is, you're going to be the person that's sitting in this chair, hopefully for the next 10 years for you. Um, you know, so you, you know, anyways. That's the process. Okay, makes sense. So if um, you're comfortable with that, because we're doing pretty good on time, it would be helpful for me to just hear from each of you. If you look at the candidate profile, what are the areas on that that you see as priorities? If you could give me two or three of them, uh, it would be good for me to hear that as I'm looking at applications. Uh, I had a chance to browse through this while we're talking. Okay. Um, one for me is being student-centered, putting kids first, and then um, the, the second one for me would be towards the lower third of the page, 
being a unifying presence, able to bridge differences, bringing people together and building consensus. And then just as important would be, you know, being a leader and communicator. Mm -hmm. Appreciate that. Carolyn? Um, well, I didn't get through all of them, so could you come back to me? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> um, I guess, and I'm, it, it, it's it's not yeah. necessarily how it's written is able to work collaboratively and productive yeah. with the board, but I would say that, um, you know, we are we are or I am looking for somebody that um, is ready is really ready to, I said I think I said before be a cartographer and a captain. So plan the next couple of years of the district because we've had some great, um, you know, we had um, Randy as an excellent interim who helped us navigate that transition period. Now we're at a point where we really need to be able to um, start planning for the future. We've got some important decisions <clears throat> and things that are taking place. I think this is a great time for somebody to come in that we can work collaboratively with, that is going to work with our community, that's going to listen to those stakeholder groups, which I think that was one of the things on here, seeks out and considers multiple perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, I would also consider the stakeholders to be the staff, so listening to teachers, um, staff and faculty to help us build whatever that map looks like for the future. Those are probably the two most important things for me. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the most important point for me would be, has the courage of his or her convictions willing to and able to make difficult decisions in the face of vocal opposition and or political pressure based on research, best practices, and what is in the best interest of students? Mm -hmm. I would add students um, and, you know, the entity that is the district and all the um, financial overview and prudence that needs to come along with that. And so um, I, I think that's, for me, very important in this yeah. district. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I start a few. Uh, is a skill that an effective communicator with outstanding listening skills, supports values and empowers staff members, trusting their judgment and expertise, will be highly visible and involved through the, throughout the district and community, holds self and others accountable to high standards and expectations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'm a slow reader, so <laughs> I'll go last. All right. I'd have no problem with that. But, um, you know, I want someone who's a visionary and able to articulate a vision that where they want to go and the direction they're headed and be able to bring people along with them, hopefully everyone. Um, but also a big part of that is being able to work collect collectively with all of us because we all have, you know, a vision for our school district that we, that's why we ran and we're hoping that we can work with that, that individual. Um, and, uh, you know, student-centered, I think that's important yeah. too because that's why we're here, it's the students. Sure. Thank you very much. Well, based on that feedback, I think I think we can, <laughs> we don't have anybody too far apart from each other, so that's a good sign. <laughs> that is a good sign. Yeah, they work really well together, yeah. I would have to say. Yeah. Uh, Tark just pointed <laughs> out to me at the end of the application um, procedure that says candidates should not contact members of the board yeah, directly. Yeah, we can change that. No, uh, well, no, oh. actually. Well, we uh, might leave it that way, and now, but I can share what you. Yeah, yeah, I'd ask that they reach out to you yeah. and that you. Yeah provide me with the information yep. so that the subcommittee can reach out to them collectively. Yep. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that, Tark. Yeah. yeah that's a good point. All right, what else? That's really all that uh, I have for you other than the very last thing um, that I have is just typically our, our, how we'll communicate in the future. What typically happens is I communicate through the board president, which um, we've already been communicating quite a bit. So. Um, you know, I would uh, uh, certainly encourage that. You know, if you if an individual board member has a question, I don't have a problem taking a phone call. I always typically let the board president know that I've been in communication. It just keeps things um, together in relationship to what's been out there and discussed. Um, so, if you're comfortable with that, then then um, you know that's how we will f move forward. So. Okay. 
Thank Anything you. else needed from us? I do no, have one I question. John has a question. A personal question. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. <laughs> um, the candidate selection by the Board of Education, that particular meeting, how long does that meeting typically last? That, so we're talking the April. Uh, uh, May 9th. The May 9th meeting? Yes. Oh, that's just between the two finalists. Yeah, that's a short meeting. Okay. I mean, well, normally that's up to you guys. <laughs> normally, normally um, you're down to two candidates and we just, the candidates' names are on a board and you give me a tally. And then we hope that, you know, we can get to, uh, maybe you're not 100% unanimous, but you get, get to the point that you realize that one individual has a vote, so you support the candidate overall that the board has selected is usually the best way to go because, you know, superintendents want to come into a position where they know they have the support of the board. So, um, but uh, and hopefully we have great candidates, you know, so that's a tough choice. Um, that's what you hope for, so. I had a question about that. Um, yeah. Is one month a typical time frame for um, the pool of candidates? Oh, for posting? Posting, yeah. yeah. Is that very typical? Oh, there are. Just like I shared with you, I've already had three people call me. Oh. I mean, the people that are looking for jobs, and it's, you know, they're on the front line. If they're in Michigan, they're on the front line system. Oh. Um, they are watching MASA. Um, uh, if they're a national search, and that's one thing we kind of have to discuss, don't we? If you want to go national again, then they're on AASA, or they're paying attention to those national associations. Um, and so, you know, that's a decision that you have to make too, because they're, you know, you're going to have to post again, and there's an expense involved with that. Um, Fourteen hundred dollars, I think, the last time, right? So, I, you know, I, I would tell you that I, um, you know, would be surprised if you would not get candidates from our neighboring states, anyways. So, I mean, that, you know, and. So you, I mean, that's just, if you're interested in looking at a pool outside of the state too, then, you know, I, I think you are gonna draw them. Some districts, I would not necessarily say that, mm -hmm. but uh, you're gonna get people from other states, so. All right. <laughs> so what's the board's view on that? Doing a national posting. We did that last time, right? Yeah, yeah. I think we should, would you, would you be open to doing that again? I don't see why we wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't want to. I don't <laughs> think. Agree. I think for a small fee, it's worth the chance that you're getting, getting a larger a better pool, pool, which is what we talked about. Especially now, I think I'm always interested in getting the most qualified, you know, amount of people that we can, and I think that's a great way to do it. So it, it would be better than not. I would be for it. Okay. Support that. Do you want me to take an official poll? That's up to you. Okay. I mean, that's a, I don't know if you need that, Rebecca. Not for me. <laughs> we probably we should. should. should I yeah, think. put it we're on the gonna, record. We've got to get it out there now. We probably need to decide that. I just wanted to um, apologize for my speedy delivery <laughs> and being present. I, I wanted to add to, I peruse the list really quick. Um, one of the, the parts about culturally competent and committed to diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I would like to at least add um, that uh, to the... Where, Michelle, to? Is uh, personal, approachable, and accessible, eager, and regularly, uh, regularly um, with all stakeholders, supports values, empowers staff, trusting their judgment and expertise. Okay. Is culturally competent and committed to diversity, um, equity, and inclusion. Was the only. Um, and so, what do you want to add to that? That was the only one so I wanted these to. Are all in the list. Okay. Yeah, he was just asking yeah. us to discuss yeah. what we would see as priorities. So that is going yeah. to that's that's in the Thank list you. and going to stay in the list. Yeah. Are there any other things in there, Michelle? Since you just that you would want me to. Nope. You know. I was trying to listen and drive at the same time, so <laughs> I could not watch. So if no. you were showing Thank anything, I have absolutely no idea um, um, if that was the case. But I wanted to at least yeah. add to no, the thank conversation. Thank you. That's just helpful for me because I wasn't involved when this was all created to hear from you directly. Okay. So. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, so. Um, 
a vote? Let's do a quick. Yeah, let's do a quick uh, roll call vote on the um, national versus limited to state only, starting with uh, John. <coughs> yes. John, did you catch that question? Yes, I did. John Don um, called me up, and I agree. Yes. With the I'm a yes. Search. Yes, I'm a yes. Tark. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. All right, and I'm a yes as well. Okay. So we made that clear. Um, is that it? That's all for me. Okay. So that will, uh, just give me a second here. That concludes uh, section three, our superintendent search discussion. I would like to make a motion to add a discussion about the superintendent evaluation schedule. Do we have a second? Second. So a second. All right. Um, we have been, uh, I have been sending one-way communications to the board regarding um, selecting dates for our superintendent search evaluation. Ideally, we would have been able to talk about this next week, but we are on an extremely tight timeline that Rebecca has been working very hard behind the scenes to try and um, orchestrate. And so with that in mind, um, you know, uh, Tarek and Carolyn, Carolyn and I had our MASB um, superintendent evaluation training um, at the end of January, I'm forgetting the exact date now. That was conducted by Rod Green of MASB, who we have chosen as, um, we've asked him to act as our facilitator for this evaluation. This evaluation process is going to be unique in that we're evaluating an interim who began his role on January 1st. And um, nonetheless, we are due, our timeline is due. We need to have this completed by June of this year, regardless of interim or permanent status. That, that is the, the requirement for the board. Um, so because of some of the issues unique to evaluating an interim uh, up against goals that were not set for that person, um, we do think the facilitated process would be the most efficient route. Um, to make sure that we're on track. Um, one of the things that I did learn during the evaluation training is how long of a process this is. Therefore, with today being February 15th, and this is due in June of this year, all these other meetings that we're having additionally for the superintendent search, we are on an extremely, um, extremely tight timeline. So with that being said, um, Rebecca did create a spreadsheet asking for availability for search for meetings. Um, she did carefully review the feedback on that and created, um, Rebecca, do you mind speaking to what that, what the, the timeline is? Yeah. Uh, you, so you sent me this email with these lists, but I wanna make sure that I'm reading this correctly. Consideration for the amount of meetings that we're going to have with the superintendent search. Um, we're trying to uh, get this done in March, ideally. And mm -hmm. so uh, I did propose a timeline, and what that would look like is we would start immediately working on the superintendent evaluation um, for the interim superintendent. Mm -hmm. um, it would come to you to review on March 11th, and we were hoping to do a special meeting on March 14th where Dr. Rod Green from MASB would come to facilitate that meeting, mm -hmm. um, and that would be the pre-evaluation, and then the following week, uh, it would be just right before the other meetings, so I, um, yeah. Oh, so you're saying, so the first meeting you're, su so, I'm provide suggesting the board that with we, the information yeah. on March 11th, mm -hmm. pre-evaluation, the first one on March 14th, March 21st would be the second, or that's the alternate it's, to the 14th? No, that's the final. That's the final, okay. Yep. Yes, this is a tight timeline. And then there's spring break, March 25th to 29th. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Yeah. So, the anyway, when we're done, yeah. The Tim, I forgot to clarify that if you want to take off, feel free. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, John. So the, the evaluation is to satisfy the, requ the state requirement that we evaluate a superintendent of some sort, is it? I mean. Yes. Okay. Interim or not. It, I mean, it, I, the, it has to be done by law. Okay. Every academic year, it sounds like. Yeah. Well, yeah. I asked, like, to Rebecca for a second. You know, it doesn't really, it kind of feels like it's checking a box, sort of, right? Because. You have to do it, and I think it it's, is, to be honest. But that's fine. I, I was just yeah. to clarify. It has to be done. It has to be done. 
and, and because, like I said, there are circumstances unique to evaluating an interim, that's why we are going the facilitated process because Rod has experience in this. This isn't the first time that um, people would be yeah, up against a timeline where they're evaluating an interim. My, my only concern would be we haven't outlined what we're evaluating our interim on and we're, aren't we kind of setting the goals at the time you're evaluating this interim? Well, there is a rubric well, that we're evaluating, we right? So request documentation based on, based on what we're evaluating. And then, yeah, Keith would have to give us evidence of every right. that, That's item. why they need these timelines outlined because it's a substantial amount of work to prepare. It usually takes about 90 days to pull it together, mm -hmm. and so we have about three weeks. So I, I would like to get, we'd like to get started on it. Yes. I will be out of town that week, unfortunately. Well, <laughs> yeah. Which week are you talking about? The, the 14th. I <laughs> believe the 11th, I will also be and The 11th, the out whole, of whole week, I'll be gone. Okay. Again, unfortunately, because of the timelines that we're up against, I, I doubt that we're going to be able to have all seven board members at each of these. Um, but we do need to lock in these dates so that we stay in compliance and have this completed by June. So, um, Rebecca, are you asking us to adopt these dates officially tonight, to commit to these? Yeah, so I don't know that the full board has seen these dates because we just put them together this week to get ready for today. Um, so what I'm asking is for are the majority of board members available on Thursday, March 14th. Now this is um, typically like a 90 minute meeting for the pre-evaluation, mm -hmm. so um, it could be a six o'clock start. It could, we can mess around with that, but just the date itself, is it open for the majority of board members? I will be landing that day, and so I will make myself available. I said I'll be, I will be landing that day, and mm -hmm. I will make myself available. So I might not be fully aware as I'm coming from a totally different time zone. Mm -hmm. But I will be here. So yes, Rebecca. Okay. <coughs> Michelle <coughs> is a yes. I'm still looking for your email. Yeah. This date wasn't, isn't listed on the, okay, no. Oh, okay, so don't March even look for 14. it. No, I worked on the, we did the superintendent search timeline and then, um, March. Yeah, so then now we're trying to figure out this timeline. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm, because we're, we're following the, I know. the emails with the list of dates regarding that and this. I'm Don't do that. Inter I know, right? I'm um, just trying yes. to be sensitive to all the meetings that I we know. have scheduled, which is it's a lot. So. It, is, it is a lot, so thank you for keeping us so organized and on track. I'm available on the 14th. I am too. Okay, and so I think maybe the larger, um, for the, the evaluation <coughs> itself, since we have our study session starting at six, and then our regular meeting started at 7.30, and an evaluation typically takes two hours, I want to make sure that board members are able to come in early, and I would suggest probably 3.30 for the evaluation on Thursday, the 21st. I can make that happen. Thursday the 21st, you said? I think that's the D. Is that what it says, <laughs> Megan? Yes. Okay. And keep in mind, we're also working with our facilitators' availability as well. Yes. Because <laughs> Dr. Green does this all around the state, so, yeah. You said 3 or 3.30? It could be either, but late afternoon on okay. that date. Just before 6? You need two hours, and it is, I just, want to give you a little bit of a break before you get into the study session and to the regular meeting. So I built in a half hour of a, so you can have dinner and things like if that. If we're up against, um, if we're in a jam and we already have that study session timed, um, we have the opportunity to replace yeah. the study session with this as well. You, you, you could do that too. Yeah, let's, let's plan to do that. Cause that's a, that's a lot. So you would still need to come in a little bit early that day. Okay. 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 That was it. Sorry, I look still, still a little confused. Um, I go keep going back to this. The board typically set the goal for the superintendent the early part of the year and evaluated the superintendent against those goals that they had set earlier in the year. I guess 
can the subcommittee circulate what you have in mind for this year ahead of time so the remaining four members have an idea of what the superintendent is going to be evaluated against because the the goal post is supposed to shift every year right the board sets goals at the beginning of the year evaluates the superintendent at the end of the year we're kind of jumping the gun a little bit so maybe the goals are somewhat already in place but it's it you want to keep ratcheting up the expectations year after year, right? So, so I'm, I'm going to suggest that we add this as uh, an item for next week's meeting okay. um, and get some clarification on that point because it's okay. an important point to clarify. Um, and we'll discuss it um, a week from tonight on the 22nd. Okay. Is that okay? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, sorry, Rebecca. But we're committed now to the 14th and the 21st. Yes. Correct. All right. Thank you. Any other discussion on this topic? No? All right. So with that, we are adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.